Hey guys, it's Bank for About PC Gaming here. Sorry I haven't done too many videos lately, I've been very, very busy, but not too busy to talk about AMD's up and coming Ryzen CPUs. For me, this is about three years too late, but it's finally here and we can all agree it certainly looked like it's going to be worth the wait. So, they finally released pricing, which I was very, very interested in, and obviously final specs as well. So, looking at the prices in the UK, which I'm most interested in living in the United Kingdom myself. I want to have a quick look at what Intel are offering. And I myself own an Intel i7 5960X, 8-core um, 16 thread. But if you look at the Intel's current line of um, extreme P CPUs, you know, you start from £420 and you work your way up to a staggering £1,599. So, You've got the 6 core 12 thread um, 6800K, £420. Not a bad deal. It's not, not exactly the worst pricing in the world. But they charge an extra £200 just to get that 40 PCI Express lanes over the 28, which is a staggering amount. And this is where Intel has pretty much been fleecing all customers. At this price range for 8 cores and 16 threads, you would have to fork out a tremendous £999 which is you know definitely fleecing the customer but can you really blame them when they haven't had any competition from AMD to to compete with so they've had it their own way for too long this is why I'm saying it's three years too late the Intel i7 5960X the first 8 core 16 thread came out 2014 and it's now 2017 and Ryzen is set to launch on March 2nd so looking at what Ryzen pricing is very 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 competitive in fact it's pretty much just cornered off the market for itself AM, Intel are definitely going to have to react they've come out with three flavors that you can pre-order now at least in the UK anyway the top of the range 1800x 489 pounds good price this is what I would have hoped for if I was going into the market now if someone said, you know, top of the range, 8 core, 16 thread, 4 gigahertz CPU, 500 pounds, you know, that's that's reasonable. That's half the price of my Intel i7 5960X. Now you're looking at its, you know, younger brother, the 1700X. The only difference is 0.2 gigahertz slower on both the base clock and the turbo. They both have 16 megabytes of level 3 cache and an additional 4 megabytes of level 2 cache. So 20 megabytes of cache in total with a 95 watt TDP, which is awesome. So definitely more power efficient than a 144 watt um, Intel solution that I'm using. So it does have some pluses on its side, especially for pricing. So this is the gold standard for me, the i7-1700X. Save yourself £100, get this. And you know, overclock it to your heart's content, and you know, you'll be saving yourself a lot of money compared to what Intel are offering. Another thing I really like as well is the pricing for the motherboards. So, you want to be going for the AMD X37 AM4 um, chipset, that's basically the enthusiast chipset. And me, myself, I like to save money where I can, I don't just buy the most expensive thing. I would probably go for the MSI Gaming Pro Carbon. And you got yourself an 8 core 16 thread beast for under 600 pounds. That's still less than my Intel processor itself. So AMD are really, really going to slaughter Intel when it comes to um, these, this range of CPUs. I really, really see them just taking a massive chunk out of the market share. And I'm very happy they're actually doing it as well. So let's have a look at some of the performance figures. So this is some. Um, an article by Usman Perzada, hopefully I've pronounced that right, from WCCF Tech. Um, obviously, there are loads of sources to gather all this information, but I like this site because they do update very frequently. As you can see, 
they've got a few performance figures for what um, the 1700X is doing. Now I had a look at this myself. Base clock 300, um, 3.5 gigahertz, but we all know, you know, if you look at the voltage, it's currently obviously, you know, at idle or just, uh, you know, power saving. So it probably just boosts up just like uh, Intel Turbo mode does. And um, looking at some of the scores, you can see in the Cinebench um, benchmark, 15, well, 1,537 for the multi GPU score and 154 for the single core. So that's really, really good. Very, very competitive. There's some more um, benchmarks as well. If you look at the Fire Strike score, I'll try and zoom that in for you. It scores 17,916 on a physique score. And this is obviously with its turbo mode at up to 3.9 gigahertz. So very, you know, very, very good boost. So it has something called XFR boost. So it goes over its, uh, you know, listed boost clock, providing the conditions are favorable for that to happen. So it's an interesting technology. I'm going to look into it a bit more. So I'll show you a few scores from my CPU. Um, so I've got the Intel i7-5960X. These are my scores. Uh, currently running at 4.4 gigahertz at 1.252 volts. This is locked. I don't use turbo or anything like that. My CPU is constantly running at this speed, uh, just for stability. My memory is running in quad channel at uh, 2,666 megahertz. He basically does times that by two because it's double data rate memory. That's what DDR stands for. So looking at my Cinebench score, I scored. 1,705 in the multi-threaded um, test and 171 in the single threaded, um, threaded test. So I'm um, looking pretty good for myself, but obviously I'm running at a higher um, speed. My physique score is 20,950 on um, Fire Strike as well. So that's just a quick comparison of what my performance is like. So I'm not as excited as some people are when it comes to Ryzen, but... Um, it definitely is a, a genuine competitor for what Intel have to offer at, at this time. So I'm very interested to see these prices come down. Looking at um, the 6950X, how long is that going to stay at £1,600? It can't stay there for long. I'll have to see Intel respond to this. It would be very interesting. Having 40 PCI Express lanes on um, quad channel memory isn't enough to justify double the price in my opinion so we'll see how it how things change uh, March the 2nd 559 pounds you can get yourself an awesome setup so for all of you guys waiting for Rise and the times now and I did say it wasn't going to be cheap but you know I think they've they've hit a really really good price point here so anyway that's as much as I'm I've got to say about it hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video and as always thanks for watching